We'll come to order and welcome to all of our guests, administration, and the rest of council. With that, Ms. Burner. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yeah, I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Shammy. Here. Councilwoman Wright. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Here. Seven members present. And with that, our invocation is by Chief Trustee. Oh Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings and many favors. Please be in this meeting, that thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. With that, I need a motion for the minutes uh, on the 318 meeting. So moved. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. If I may bring up a discrepancy on page one of the minutes, it says that I was not in attendance, which is true. Then you go down to the page with the uh, mayor's court report. It says that I voted to accept the mayor's court report and the finance report. Fix that. Okay, that's again. <coughs> oh, it says accepted six zero, so I'll just remove Grim's name from the right. minutes. With that, the do we need a motion to make those amendments? Yes, please. So I um, I make that motion to. Strike my name. Second. Second by Eggleston. Mayor Cook? Yes. We're voting on the amendment. Councilman Grimm? This is on the amendment, correct? Correct. Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. And then I had a first to accept the minutes from Eggleston and a second from Shammy. Yeah. And is it okay to call the vote for those? If you will. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Abstain, I was not here. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy. Those minutes are accepted 601. All right, under communications, is there any other communications than the presentation I had to make? If not, Mike, will you and April both come up? Both? Mm -hmm. Both of you. <laughs> because I'm going to let her present this to you. Since she is a very dedicated part of the family, and I have a lack of presentation for Mike. It says, Mayor Mike Lowry, steadfast leadership and unwavering dedication during his term from 2016 and, and 23, have transformed this city by fostering growth, inclusion, and prosperity. In recognition of this exceptional service, we proudly present Mike Lowry with this key to the city, symbolizing our deep gratitude for his enduring commitment to the betterment of the city of Nicolau. And I'm going to give this to April to present to Mike. Well, thank you. <laughs> Hi, sir. All right. April. I'm going to even give you the box. Oh, okay. What do you need, Chief? Look this way, both of you. Oh. Got it. This young gentleman 
and I say young gentleman because he's quite a bit younger than I am. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Has done a lot for the city. Please don't lose this now. Both in the political arena and heritage of flight, and quite a few other things around the city. And it's with great recognition that I just wish he had stayed on. <laughs> Getting me out of trouble. All right. With that being, I guess, Mr. Kitko, you get to give the city manager report. Um, before that, oh, you yeah. have a public hearing for. You want to do the public hearing? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, public hearing for ordinance 2024-15. If you will read that, Ms. Sure. Burner. We have ordinance 2024-15 introduced on March 18th, 2024. Public hearing and action on April 1st, 2024. It's up. It's up for action on uh, April 15th. Okay. But this is a pre-public hearing on if there's any questions brought in before the ordinance um, were to be introduced. Oh, I read it wrong anyways, didn't I? Yes, I, I, I added the word action in there. So public hearing today, action on April 15th. An ordinance amending chapter 1244 of the city of New Carlisle's planning and zoning code. <coughs> Do you want to expand on that, Mr. Kitko? So basically, uh, the simplified version of this is to allow a zoning inspector the ability to send additional items to mayor's court. Right now, only the code enforcement can send certain items to the mayor's court. This will uh, give the power to, we've had, I guess, a zoning inspector in there for some time. And in, in the ordinances, certain exhibits that um, explain some items that will change with this ordinance. but. But simplified is pretty much, you know, being able to send more items in the like exterior property maintenance code to the mayor's court. Are there any comments from the audience in regards to this ordinance? If not, no, you can close your public hearing. We will close the public hearing then. All right, back to you, Mr. Kitko, on the city manager report. Thank you, Mayor, members of council, citizens of New Carlisle. Um, we'll start off, uh, as we know, the departmental reports will be for the second meeting in April. Uh, the planning and zoning mayor's court report is also attached for this first uh, report. Uh, does council have any questions on that? Alrighty, moving on to informational items under discussion topics. Um, ordinance 2024-07 is tabled until further notice. City Council retreat and strategy, strategy session dates. Uh, says motion requested, when I talked to Randy earlier, basically um, we're looking for information on when you do not have availability. And if you do not know off the top of your head of when you're not available, um, you can email those over to uh, Mr. Bridge um, as soon as you can and then he will get with the gentleman and then start setting a schedule. And that also includes Saturdays. Has anybody got any comments in regard to availability now, or you want to kick it around? My schedule is tight this time of year, so it just don't depend. On if we do the four hour, I know we had talked about doing like a four hour evening session or something, uh, that would work better for me. I can make about any day work with that. Are you suggesting like from six to ten or a couple hours to two evenings? Even even if we started, you know, like four to eight or something, I could leave a little early and get but um that's Chris, for the rest of the council to figure Does that interfere with your work schedule? Yeah. Okay. And I can do later, like six to ten too, but uh, well let's go ahead and email. Randy, I guess, with any kind of conflicts that we've got. That way he can put it all put it together. 
All right, thank you. Uh, moving on to utility company rights, uh, information will be coming to the April 15th meeting. Uh, Monroe Meadows, um, I have approved the final plans. They can still break ground, even though you see that the final plans are expected to uh, come to council in August. Uh, moving on, city council diocese. Uh, Mr. Bridge uh, met with a local woodworker. He is coming to the next meeting on April 15th. Mr. Bridge requested that you guys uh, take a look, uh, get online, Google some diocese. If you got an idea that you might like, you know, you could send that over to him or bring some of your ideas at what may look good to you. And then the gentleman will be here and then you guys can discuss those ideas at the next meeting. This will also probably entail uh, bringing the marriage court into play here at some point, I don't know what the plan is at that moment to the calendar wise, but I would imagine with the amount of people that we're having going through the court that we're going to need a bigger space to do it. Mm -hmm. Back to you, Mr. Gitko. Thank you. Moving on to uh, the next discussion top topic is Rumpke. Uh, Rumpke has requested to start trash pickup this upcoming Monday for the Eclipse, April 8th, to try and get their vehicles out of the municipalities. And this went out to whoever they had contracts with. Um, their initial request was to start at 2 a.m. Um, there has been a possibility that they could start um, at 4. And Mr. Bridge was looking for council's input on your thoughts about starting early but maybe not 2 a.m. early this has been brought about by the fact that the transfer station where rumpy takes their trash is also opening up early that day they're opening up at two o'clock in the morning they're shortening their drop-off hours also in order to compensate so basically they want to know if if we would adjust my feeling is two o'clock in the morning is a little early i i think that we could possibly work with four o'clock and getting the word out to have your trash out on sunday rather than wait until monday morning i've asked uh, kathy if she can possibly put something on the websites of hers that she's got in order to possibly facilitate this and make it a little easier because i will assume that after an early morning pickup we're going to get a lot of complaints about miss trash but what's council place <laughs> go ahead mr bond no, does rumpke have any accommodations if there is a large number of citizens that do miss the pickup to come back later the next day or at this point, I don't believe that's been discussed, but that might be something that uh, we might bring up to uh, Rumpke at that point. Uh, that would probably entail them bringing another truck in here. Uh, but again, I don't know what our situation is going to be. Chief, do you have an estimate on your end of it, what we're going to have as far as an influx of people? Not right now, Mayor. Right now they're stating that we could, the area, not just not so much the city, but the area could double its population that between the 7th and the 8th. They're, the biggest problem they're looking at is not the event itself, but the influx in and especially the influx the, of people leaving on the 8th and 9th. Uh, the last eclipse that they looked at was in Tennessee, and it averaged somewhere between 10 and 12 hour gridlocks on the highways. Any other comment? Go ahead, Bill. So why doesn't Rumpke, like they do on a lot of the holidays, skip that day and pick it up the next day? I would imagine this is going to <laughs> unveil with their unions, and consequently would force their Saturday crew into the overtime basis. Whatever it does, it does. But I can only imagine 
even at four o'clock in the morning, you're going to have a lot of people ticked off with them banging trash trucks and stuff at 4 a.m. The schedule adjustment, I believe, was brought up and discussed. I don't know the details that, so I can ask Mr. Bridge to maybe send out just a quick uh, note on what that discussion was, because I know in a holiday it's already pre-scheduled, and I remember hearing something about if they cancel that Monday, well, then the Tuesday people are not being able to pick up. Well, then that moves the Tuesdays to Wednesday, so it starts a chain reaction. I know that little bit, but I don't know past that. But they do it several times a year when a holiday falls on trash day. So they could just add one more day pickup time to it and pick it up and adjust their schedule accordingly. Let me ask this. I'll throw this back to the city manager and let him uh, talk to Rumpke. But in the interim, is it uh, council's thoughts? that we lean toward the four o'clock if we cannot go into the Saturday pickup. <clears throat> go ahead, Kevin. My thought was, yeah, we could do the four o'clock. I too would prefer the extra day, like a Christmas pickup. Those trucks are loud, they're very loud. They're louder than the other folks were. So that will be a problem. And then I know more people will miss trash. I miss trash as it is. It comes early. <laughs> Peg? I would say four o'clock pickup start would be better than two o'clock. But I, if they could adjust it, but I don't know that they could adjust the schedule. Anybody else? This Go ahead. I think a proper question to Rumkey would be why are we waiting until now? Well, We've this has been a month. Well, I agree with you coming. there, but this started, Mr. Kitko, hear me out. Did this start last week or the week before? I think it's been in the works about two weeks. The initial email come out, and I believe it stated, uh, I know there was an immediate phone call um, about the contract and what was in it and the various uh, stipulations and allowances and stuff like that. Um, but. I yeah, it was like a week or so ago, I think, when it very first came out because there, every municipality for that Monday was listed on the email. Well, the other thing is, I think when Montgomery County shut the, or changed the hours at the transfer station, I think this is what really kicked us off. Okay. And in talking with uh, the site manager down here at the transfer, he did not allude to how far back he knew about the the change in hours. So I think, we're, Mr. Kitko, I'm going to say talk to Randy and have him talk to Rumpke. If we cannot change the day, I think most of council is in agreement with the four o'clock. I will pass that on to Mr. Bridge. Anything else on your end? Uh, the next item on the uh, report is uh, the executive assistant to the city manager. Uh, Randy had gotten in about 40 applicants. He reviewed the top three applicants. Um, it was posted on the city's website. It was posted on Indeed and the Facebook page. And um, April happens to be here, and he had selected April to become our new executive assistant to the city manager, and she starts uh, April 9th. <laughs> now, how are you going to do that in the pool at the same time? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Got anything else? That's perfect. And uh, the last thing would be any additional discussion topics that that you have for me or the staff. Okay, go ahead. Kat. I have a question. You said that we weren't going to get a final approval for the Monroe Plat until August, but they're going to start building. So everything in the your preliminary plat is all pre-approved, which is the the lot dimensions, the the setbacks, everything that's in the code, including the construction of the utilities. 
that's already been pre already been approved. Mm -hmm. um, the the final plat, which is just a formality, um, they can still break ground with that because they're not changing anything. So they can still do that with uh, the the final. There's not a the preliminary and the final are the same. There's just it's written in our code that there is a uh, two different meetings that have to approve that. Is there a place where all this information about that plot is bunched together so the people who are interested can look there and see what's coming or what what the final things were? So yeah, it, this has been posted on the city's website since the inception of uh, Reserve at Honey Creek mm -hmm. or uh, um, and Monroe Meadows, and then through the whole planning board phases, all the public hearings of the planning board, all the public hearings for the city council when they um, had some part in that, and then um, any kind of um, advertisement that went out for those. Yeah, it's been out there. If there's, if they're wanting to know like procedural stuff as far as ordinances, that is all lumped in the 1200s for how a planning board or planning for a development starts. All the way inception to completion right and then um, the actual plans themselves they are they've been put online um, for the lots the dimensions and where the utilities are going and stuff like that right but what you're telling me is there's piece here 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 and all over the place is there nowhere that it's just like Monroe will be X amount by X amount by this by this by this there's it, nothing like that um, it, it is. I think. I think it's all together on the website when it was going through planning board and through city council. The original. Yeah. All through. All, yeah. Everything that was going through the approval uh, phases. Okay. All right. I'll check. Thanks. Okay, Bill. You had some. Yeah. All right. Anybody else got anything else under additional business or anything for staff? And that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Committee reports. Uh, we got any committee reports? <clears throat> the only thing that I will possibly interject, Vice Mayor, myself, the uh, Planning and Zoning Director, and Mr. Bridge attended the Evans auction of the properties out there. Of the 28 properties that were sold, the total amount raised was twelve million four hundred and fifty some thousand dollars. Now I have not got back uh, from Schrader a list of who bought what, and I hope they will send that over to us so we have some kind of an idea. But I think all in all, it was a good crowd, and. Uh, it was very well received over there at Springfield. I can tell you I had a phone call today from a gentleman. I won't disclose yet because it, it's not official, um, but it plans on being the property between our cemetery and the little house across from What a Dog, that farm field where the, where the semi-trailer advertises that will still be farmland. And then the piece just to the north of it will be farm ground. That's all I know at this point. I just only talked well, about one, you know one, one, one buyer. Mm -hmm. um, nothing else. If not, I guess uh, we'll go for comments from the members of the public. Uh, you're limited to five minutes. Need to go back to the podium and give us your name. And I think write your address on the page that's up there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, I'll remember. I'm Go ahead, you know. Uh, Janelle Zimmerman. Got my address. Everybody probably knows. I was going to say everyone. Two nineteen Prentice Drive. Last few years, I got to memorize you know. <laughs> um, I had a question like with what Kathy brought up, like where do you find that on there? I remember they came and they brought different plans and stuff and then they'd vote and they would change something, but I don't ever remember seeing anything that showed the final results of how everything looks and the lot sizes and where everything's going to be. So if it's on there, where do we find it? So on the city's webpage, you'll go to the um, council and planning board um, 
when, when those meetings were advertised. I, I don't know how long they keep the meetings up. Do you want that? So under council info, there's a few places there um, where you can go click on those. Um, the current city council packet agendas, and it'll have all the past. But all those plans were, you know, like available at all the meetings and stuff like that as they were voted on. I believe, and I will have to check, and I'm not specifically sure where where the Monroe Meadows and where the Reserve at Honey Creek plans are actually listed at outside of going through all the approval process. Well, that's good, I guess, but if you don't even know where it is, <laughs> there's not much hope for us. <laughs> Well, it, it's it's on the it's on the site, and I'm, I just got to try and go to if you click there, take, and then so they actually have one that shows the new final plan and everything about the new final plan that has been approved. Yeah, and not just each time it changes, you see it change. That's what I'm wondering. I'd like to see what the new final thing is. So anything that was already approved, there has been no changes since Planning Board and Council has um, done their approvals at that time. So if that, that plan that they had in front of them to build 355 homes for Reserve at Honey Creek, and that, I don't remember the number, it might be 364, but that has not changed. But I remember there used to be an archive of all the meetings and all the documents that went with that under council mm -hmm. and just like and I haven't found it yet I'll have to follow up and see how because I don't I don't do the web page much um, and I'm not in the planning all I do is get the plans to me and I review those and then um, the planning director and then mr. bridge do all the meetings with council and the planning board okay so I will follow up on a location for that okay, I had a question about the plant the planning board meeting too I know the last one they had at the same time on the same day as council, so you can't really go to both meetings at the same time. And I wondered why that was. And a lot of times I don't see a date on there when they're having their meeting, but I guess it's because they don't have them very often, maybe it's why I don't see it. But they also never say what it's gonna be about, you know, when you get on there. They just say there's gonna be one. Uh, usually there's a li there's an item um, listed on what the planning board uh, meeting is about. The legal ad has to be posted to tell you what what the um, meeting is about. Do you know what day the legal ad comes out in the paper? How often do you do your... For a council meeting or for a planning meeting? I only do the ones for council. Right. How so how the week before the meeting, it has to come out. It has to come out two days before the meeting. And then sometimes, oh, so, so there's a week a, before. It's on a different day. Yeah. yeah. They don't put that in the paper for like a whole week. No, it runs one. one day, and it ha legally it has to run 48 hours before the meeting actually happens. So, you so have it could be. To look at a paper every day to find out where it is. In some of planning board meetings, depending on what is at the planning board, there is actually notification on whether it's 200 feet, 500 feet outside of that particular parcel that's in question. Um, hand-delivered uh, mailers go out to all those people that w are within the code's requirements mm -hmm. and then there's a legal ad posted that says you know we've notified here's what the here's the meeting time here's what the meeting is about and then it's posted on the website with all the materials that will be um, given to planning board or the BZA or council okay I guess I've just never been able to find it but that's not unusual for me so <laughs> thank you mm -hmm. Bill, do you have something? Uh, Mr. Kirko, would yes. the planning board have copies of those plans? They should, yes. Would Derek have a copy of those plans? I mean, uh, sorry. <laughs> We're going back. And had a flashback. Uh, Brian, Brian, what, Brian has those. Yeah, everybody, we all have a set of those. So, uh, Mrs. Zimmerman, you can see uh, uh, the planning board. Brian? He should have a copy of those plans, finished plans that you can see. If you contact him and make arrangements with him. You're welcome. Oh, I guess he too. Go ahead. Uh, I haven't seen archived a second. Do 
you want to state your name over? Do you mind doing it over YouTube, or you can write it down if you would rather write it down? YouTube. You have to state your name, but your address. Uh, whatever. Okay. Uh, Austin Owens, 216 Galewood Drive. Um, I've been living here for about two and a half years now. Um, and in just that time on Galewood, not only has my vehicle gotten struck and essentially totaled, the people who rented the property at 218 got their Cadillac rear-ended and had the whole rear-end destroyed. And then my neighbor at 220, his truck, same thing. The only reason why they caught the person who rear-ended him at 220 is because he couldn't get his car going anywhere. Now the stuff that happened to me and my old neighbors who don't live there anymore, they moved out, at 218, hit and runs, nothing. They just hit, I come home one day, my Ford Ranger parked in front of my house, mashed up against the curb. I called uh, Brian Moore, is that his name? He, he's our planning director, yes. Or whoever, I, I just called City Hall and they directed me to somebody. So and I asked him, I, I told him, I said, is there anything we can do? And I, I know there's only so much Sheriff Department can do because there's what, two, three of them here in New Carlisle? And I can't expect them to sit there all day. But I, I just speed bumps something, because it's all day, every day you stand there, they're flying up and down the road 40, 50 mile an hour. And I mean, it's, and then again, my truck that I just sold, sold it, come back, mirrors mashed uh, off of it. I mean, just completely, it's absurd how quickly, and you know, I understand it, kids especially, with straight way, I was the same way when I was 16. You get a straight way, you just have at it. But, you know, being 25 now and my own property owner and all that, it's just kind of, what, what's got to give? You know what I mean? And I understand there's only so much you guys can do, but when it comes to like, let's say speed bumps, I, I do asphalt for a living. I know how much it is for the tonnage. Um, and I know how much work or how little work really it takes to put that in. So I just want to know if there's anything that can be done if I've come across as rude, I apologize. I just, it, it's concerning, especially because me and my wife plan on having a kid in the next year. And I wanna be able for my kid to have the same that I had growing up where they could play in the front yard and not have to be essentially babysat the whole time because they're worried that somebody's gonna come booking 50 mile an hour down the road and run them over. Or it's even playing basketball in the street, which albeit looking back on it, not the safest thing to be had, but it was a fond childhood memory of mine. I just want to know what's what's got to give for something to happen. Perhaps we can uh, request Mr. Bridge to see if we can have uh, one of the cruisers keep a little more of a check on Gail Wood. And uh, yeah, uh, other than that, these deputies, we've only got one maybe two on duty and they're spread kind of thin i i don't know what there is as to a whole lot of what we can do i know sometimes when you walk next door and say something to the neighbor you end up in a little bit of a problem so i go ahead Peg. how I, what would it entail to put speed bumps on the streets in Northwood? Because I've had people tell me they speed up and down those streets all the time. I can, I'll just start by this. Every street in every city has speeders on it, not to dilute the problem. Speed bumps in, in your main streets, in your slower areas where you don't have residential properties, usually are put. If you speed bumps in residential properties become an issue, they're wanted until everybody drives over me here, the trucks, the trailers, the tr uh, everything going over them, and you can't sleep day or night because that's all you hear is the speed bumps. Um, I am not for speed bumps, nor do you look at the Ohio Uniform Code at putting speed bumps on a 25 mile an hour road. You know, um, they're just not highly desirable in real congested, congested uh, residential areas because that's all you'll hear um, is everybody driving over them. So they're wanted until you have to listen to them all night. What about putting signs up saying children at play or something to slow people down? There's a few at round. Um, I'm not saying that there's not something that they don't see that will stop them, but I just know people it just a, de a deputy being there maybe a little bit more with the vision to stop it. Um, but there's no 
fix. You know, we don't say a permanent fix. They're just, um, it, it's, uh, I hate to just say it's today's um, thing that people just want to speed and that type of thing. Um, but, you know, I've been requested with speed bumps. I've run asphalt for almost 30 years. So I'm very familiar with them. Yeah. I know length, the height, and trust me, most people, they, they work. It's not that they don't work, but if you have to live by one, you wish it wasn't there. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you right now, I told Brian that on the phone, and you put it right in front of my house. I'd all sit there and watch them jump that thing 40 mile an hour all day until they learn their, yeah. until they learn. Uh, I'm not, I'm not no. worried about, I sleep like a bear anyway, so it ain't gonna keep me up at night. <laughs> um, it's just, you know, like, like Dayton, for example, Dayton, you can't go through a neighborhood where it's 25 mile an hour and there not be a speed bump. Mm -hmm. And I understand it may be undesirable, but at the same time, when I'm sitting here and I'm out thousands of dollars on a vehicle, because it did, it totaled my vehicle. And that was, I, pay, I didn't have any money to replace it at that time, so I had to pull that out of that thin air just to have something to drive to work. So it's kind of, I understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, it's unfair to the residents who have to pay thousands upon thousands of dollars to replace their vehicles when it could be as something as simple as, oh, we got to put up with noise. Well, we wouldn't have had to put up with noise if they would learn to behave. It's kind of the old saying, one bad apple ruins the bunch. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Not, not trying to de be disrespectful in any manner. I'm just stating my case. You know what I'm saying? No, completely <laughs> understand. Um, Go ahead, Bill. Uh, I know in other cities, uh, he mentioned Dayton. He, he didn't mention Van Day, and I know they have. They have speed bumps about, excuse me for reaching in your eyes, about this mm -hmm. wide, and it's a slow grade. But I tell you what, if you hit that at 30, 35 mile an hour, you're gonna know you hit something. Nope. Uh, I don't see uh, why something like that could not be done. Uh, most times when people mention speed bumps, I think the one that comes up about this high, and it's like hitting a rock. No. <laughs> uh, I like the I like the rounded ones better. I don't see why we can't do that. Uh, that would basically be a decision of council to do that. And and there's other streets that uh, people fly up and down. You know, Lake Avenue, and not Lake uh, Smith. That'd be an awesome place to put speed bumps. The the long gated ones, or whatever they call them. I don't even know what they call them. But uh, but I think uh, what would what would some, something like that cost? Any idea? You're probably we usually get we get a ton around seventy two to ninety dollars a ton and installing it. I mean, it's not an expensive okay. item. Yeah. You know. So so I think if council, because it is a problem in town, uh, even over there where I live, there's people that likes to. See how fast I can take that curve down now. I'm waiting on one of them to roll up into the yard, up into somebody's yard. And they do the same thing when they come around the corner off of uh, Villa. They just nail it until they get to that curve, you know. So I think if council would so be inclined to put something like that in, uh, I think it would help a lot. And to his point, him losing thousands of dollars because some kid wants to do this and then run off uh, outside of cameras, that's the only thing I can tell you. Uh, I have cameras all over my property. They do anything on my property or in the street, or down the street or up the street, I've got them. And uh, there's quite a few people on my street that has cameras. So once the word got out, they quit coming around. But, you know, it's just a, just a suggestion, just an idea, you know, to, to help our citizens out. Chris? Thank you, Ms. Berger. Um, yeah, I feel your pain on Gale, but I lived a two, three, three go for a while, and uh, we have a house over there. And it does happen day and night and late night, and it's definitely a problem that we need to uh, squash. And that's not just Gale, but that's a lot of other streets, too. Just, uh, I think we, as council, we should focus on that, and uh, I feel your pain on Right. And, and to the camera point, I do have cameras on my property and it usually catches a squirrel fart, but this day it obviously didn't, it didn't catch nothing. And I talked to my neighbors and of course theirs didn't catch anything. And I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it happens on South yeah, but don't, don't we have speed bumps down on one of the streets south of Madison? 
No, that's just the road. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we did. That's where the road buckled. Like <laughs> maybe, maybe that was back in the early days. Feels like it's been done. All right, well, sir, let us look into it. Let us get with Mr. Bridge and see what we can come up with. And I'll go ahead and, and put this on kind of on. Well, wait a minute. Go ahead, Dale. I do get around quite a bit. Yes, Dayton has a fetish for speed bumps, but they're all small ones, small tall. And you hit those at five miles an hour and you get jostled. Wright State, however, has their crosswalks on top of a speed bump. Those you can take at a decent speed. I have seen other people have taken them too fast and you see little digs in the pavement where the front end hits the bottom. But the longer speed bumps make ver very little noise. Like I said, unless you're going too fast and you dig into the pavement after the, at the end of the speed bump. Like I say, let's talk to Mr. Bridge uh, with the sergeant and see what we can come up with in regards to this. Uh, sergeant, we'll sergeant. put that on your calendar, Mr. <coughs> Gitko, to discuss with Mr. Bridge. I got it noted. Okay. It's noted. We will see what we can come up with. Thank you. Can I get your name again? Austin Owens. Austin uh, Evans? Owens. Owens. O W E N S. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? If not, I guess we'll close the public comments and go to ordinance and resolutions. Mrs. Burner. Okay, give me just a second. My computer went to sleep. All right. First, two resolutions. We have resolution 2024-05, introduction, public hearing, and action tonight. A resolution approving the final plan for the Clark County wide 911 system. So moved. Second. Do so we have a motion and a second? Any discussion or would you, would you like to expand upon this i can give you a very brief description uh so basically this is just to approve the final plan of the 911 system as is stated um as you go through it just gives you questions it was given by the state we meet all those not as in we but the whole 911 station they meet all those it gives a description of cost um you you as council already annually um, pay for the services that they're adding into this we already do that annually so nothing changes there. So um, it was just requested that council approve uh, the final plan. Go ahead, Ken. I have a comment. Um, so the way I read this, it's $22 per call to turn a 911 call. I did not know that. Is that covered under people's insurances or is there a reimbursement somehow for that? No, the city pays that. The city, the city pays just that. pays that. Okay, I was just curious, I just found that Extraordinary. I don't know. I know. Yeah. Anyone else? Okay. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chammy? That passes 7 0. Moving on to ordinances, we have two intros and two with action tonight. Ordinance 2024 13, this was introduced on March 18th, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the sale by internet auction of city owned personal property which is not needed for public use or is obsolete or unfit for the use for which it was acquired. So moved. And an explanation of this ordinance is for to allow myself to um, advertise after the passage of the ordinance uh, to sell the self-contained breathing apparatus SCBA an air compressor and a cascade system that the fire department used for years I think we got it in 20, 2015 we got it it was a used piece in 2015 we received a grant uh, well mostly grant a little bit of our funds to buy a new compressor and cascade system so the new system is in this will just allow me to sell our old one. Any discussion? 
Um, I have another comment. I'm sorry. I wanted to thank you for putting that on the web page so people can go there and see that for themselves, what the city has up for sale. I appreciate that. And the uh, down here is looking good. So. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Berger. Okay. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chammy? Yes. That passes 7 0. We have Ordinance 2024 20, 14 introduced on March 18th, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing an expenditure of funds in excess of $35,000 for the paving and striping of the Heritage Hall and Hensley Park parking areas. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. An explanation of this ordinance is to allow me to um, bring on Wagner paving uh, to pave Heritage Hall, stripe it, and then they will install bollards as well to protect the building um, uh, from people running into it. We seem to have you know some of that going on. And then the parking lot over at Hensley Park, where it is currently gravel, we will get that paved, striped, I think, with six uh, spots over there. And this, the amount, the monies for this is already approved in the 2024 appropriations budget. Do you have any projected calendar date for this to get done? Um, we think we're probably somewhere around May. They're, they're trying to get us in. We don't want first dibs on the bony asphalt when it comes out. So um, we're probably looking somewhere around May. He's already got some jobs lined up. So they get us in as soon as possible. Okay, Councilwoman, right? Uh, yes. Oh, ma sorry. Sir? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, did we get other estimates on this blacktop? Or? I did. I, I got another one from them, uh, or from another company, and they were probably, I think there were four or 5,000 more. Okay, thank you. Back to you, Ms. Burr. I'm sorry. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy. That passes 7 0. Moving on, we have Ordinance 2024 15. This was read previously, but I'll read it one more time. This was introduced on March 18th, public hearing tonight, April 1st, in action on April 15th, 2024. An ordinance amending Chapter 1244 of the City of New Carlisle's Planning and Zoning Code. Next, we have Ordinance 2024-16, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on April 15th. An ordinance amending the City of New Carlisle Income Tax Rules and Regulations regarding the Local Board of Tax Review. Ordinance 2024-17, Introduction Tonight, Public Hearing and Action on April 15th. An ordinance amending Ordinance 2014-04 for the purpose of correcting a Scrivener's error regarding the permit fee for final plat estimated project cost. Um, we have other business. Would you like me to read that, Mayor Cook? Additional city business. Council will have their coffee and donuts on Saturday, April 13th at Heritage Hall from 10 to 12 and it's open for any discussion on other city-related business. Go ahead, Mr. Hammy. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Kitko, my neighbor has been bugging me about the, uh, in front of her house, that hole from the trash trucks again. Mm -hmm. Can we do something about that? Yeah, I'll take a look at it. As you know, we just did some, I think, on North Scott. We did two lanes where we did uh, some partial death repair in that area so let me get over there and uh, take a look because I have planning on doing a little bit because I think the 200 block has a little as well yeah. right where we were so this one's like Scott South Scott right now so it's kind of okay yeah, it's like uh, three foot deep like three foot deep basically yeah also I have one more item everybody be careful we have some storms moving in uh, this evening uh, if you have anything on the front porch back porch of you don't want to blow away, put it away inside. Uh, we don't need anything like this, but since the recent storms that we had two weeks ago, thankfully this does, but it wasn't thankful that it 
it in uh, any lake. Great value in the city. It's terrible. So, that's all I got. Anyone else? Bill, go ahead. Uh, last week, or uh, last meeting, we uh, were talking about uh, a foot between two bumpers on a car. Uh, council wanted to uh, look into changing that ordinance. The uh, manager and I have had talked about it, but I also had time to think about it. I'm hoping the rest of you had time or thought about it. The We've had one complaint. Uh, that was the letter that uh, Mr. Graham uh, had entered into uh, the minutes. No, that or, no. Who was? There was never a letter entered into the minutes. Oh, he it was, was for a whole separate thing. Okay, uh, I thought Mr. Graham had it entered in. Anyways, we they read a letter about uh, somebody got a ticket that had two of their personal vehicles bumper to bumper, and we was going to. Uh, fix it so that they wanted to hit one and hit their own car they're more than welcome to. I don't see how that's going to, and I know I made the motion, Mrs. Wright seconded it, it passed four to two, I think it was, or, yeah, four to two. Uh, I don't think we should do that. I know I've, I'm backtracking here a little bit, and the reason I think that it isn't gonna benefit the entire city or population of New Car Lot. If we're going to do anything with ordinances, we should do something to benefit everybody equally, whether they want to take advantage of it or not. Uh, so I am not going to pursue that particular ordinance with the city manager. I also asked him, I don't know if he did or not, I asked him not to waste any city funds with the attorney on working on that. I hope uh, that was, that's okay with council. If it isn't, tell me now. Uh, so I was looking at some other ordinances. So this is like a rough draft that I brought for everybody. Let me pass this down, please. And Hand this over to Mr. Pitko. Yes, this, oh, it's on front and back. It's just front and back, yeah, yeah. a blank one. So the ones I looked at was under the parking and private property. We've always, the approved surfaces has always been cement blacktop or limestone. Uh, talking with the manager about this, I told him that there is no reason why uh, we couldn't use three-quarter gravel or number two gravel, and you could park an RV or a truck or whatever you wanted on it, and it would, it would hold it and work just as well. And correct me if I'm wrong, but the last time I bought it, it was cheaper than blacktop cement or limestone, crushed limestone. It's a cheaper fix <clears throat> for people who wants to put uh, extra, you know, a side yard driveway or whatever in, or something to sit at something on in the backyard or whatever. So that, that was one change that I, I would like to uh, work on with council's approval uh, to, to get an ordinance uh, in front of us and, and uh, maybe at the next meeting, a, a reading on it. The other thing I was looking at was under 16, or 1460-44, recreational, commercial, industrial, accessory uses. The, uh, which, uh, which I was under section one of that for the recreational vehicles. Currently it's five feet or 10 feet from the back lot line, but it's only five foot from the edge of the lot line. Why can't we move it back five foot from any lot line? and let the people use their land the way they see fit. To either park a vehicle, and, and that would also, in my opinion, would go for sheds or whatever. Uh, five foot's plenty of room to get a mower around there. Uh, two foot, you can get a push mower around it. You know, uh, and if it's fenced, 
you know, they have to keep the grass down one way or the other, so they, they probably wouldn't want to put it up against the fence anyways. And then down under C1 uh, for camping recreational vehicles, the, uh, again, it's the approved services, which I've already addressed. Uh, right now you can only have a vehicle there if you're loading or unloading it for the beginning of the camping season or the end of the season for 48 hours. Uh, as I explained to Mr. Bridge and having a former owner of a fifth wheel, you can't load it and unload it in 48 hours unless you're taking two days off of work to do it. Uh, I would suggest if we could move that to 72 hours, that really only gives them about 18 hours because they're working eight, sleeping eight, and they got eight to work on it, you know, to, to, to uh, help them out. And also the time limits, uh, the manager, the, the, the original ordinance or the original code says, and I, and I deleted it out of here but didn't think about it, that you could only keep it there for uh, the 48 hours, then the manager could give you extended permission. And I told the city manager he had no business extending anything, that that should be written in the code. So he agreed if we was to do this, that as long as somebody needed extra time more than at 72 hours, they could notify the city that they still don't have, have what they need done to their unit, and they can automatically get another 72 hours, but then after that it needs to be moved. And then on number three, it says a conditional use permit may be granted by the planning board. I told him the planning board has no concern with this. It needs to be removed because they don't meet every month. It would cost a couple hundred bucks, and by the time they even get in front of the board, whatever they wanted to use it for is, uh, would be gone. And what uh, we thought they would want to use it for you have out of town guests and they're driving a fifth wheel or they're driving a coach and they want to park it in your driveway and sleep in it, they should be allowed to do it in case the house ain't big enough to sleep the six or eight extra people that shows up. And all they would need, like I explained to Mr. Uh, the city manager, is uh, a shoreline for an electric to operate your unit with because the unit is self-contained. It has water on board, it has tanks on board for their showers, their commodes, or I doubt they do dishes because they'll be in the house. And uh, now I got one more we talked about, uh, you know, it's been raining a lot here lately. We got a lot more rain coming. Right now you have to cut your grass at six inches. My mower don't like mowing wet grass. It kind of clogs it up, and it's about six inches right now. So uh, I'm, I'm proposing that we move that to eight inches. Me personally, I would not let my grass get that high. I would have to have somebody come in and bale it if I did that, because I have my yard treated, and as soon as rain hits it, it grows worse than a weed. So those are the changes I'm proposing. If council don't have a problem with these changes or have any questions, then I will pursue this and hopefully have an ordinance at the next meeting to, to be read, and then you'll see exactly what the language says. Bill, do you have any questions? Has these been run by a uh, city manager? You didn't hear me talk, did you? I have been discussing this with the manager. <laughs> have they also hit, hit the law director? I don't know if he sent it to the law director or not, but the manager had no problem with anything It's in yellow, and he has a copy of it. I emailed it to him. In fact, to my surprise, the one on the eight inches of grass, he suggested. Go ahead, Bill. Mick, whoever you are, huh? Yeah. Mr. Kitko. Yes. What would, be, what would be the difference between parking on a hard surface, such as asphalt, or parking on number two gravel? So the only difference is is the upkeep. 
of gravel. That's where we, or whoever the planning or code enforcement is, it's not so much it's really a gravel issue, because a lot of people do take care of that little gravel pad. It's once it starts getting inundated with weeds, it's parked on an approved service, but then they don't move it to mow it. And then you have to add more gravel. So it has to stay clean as gravel. It can't be having grass growing up through it. And number two, gravel, <laughs> that's, uh, you're probably, if you have a bad area of soil, you're gonna put twos down first. You don't wanna park on it or drive on it. Twos are pretty good size. You're probably gonna wanna go to uh, three quarters. Right, yeah, your crushed limestone is a, is a three quarter inch, maybe 411, you might go, you know, little different size stone. But you, I mean, you're gonna go with crushed limestone and standard crushed limestone is three quarter inch. Number twos, you know, those are soft, al almost softball size. Yeah, they're, they're, hard, they're hard to move without a tractor. Most people don't hand shuffle those things, so. Um, but there's, those are the only difference between gravel and a hard surface is you constantly either have to spray to keep the weeds down. Even if you put barrier underneath, most weeds aren't from coming up through. It's all the weeds being blown. So if you mow your grass, you blow it into that stone, that's where your grass starts growing. That's the only problem we have really um, for additional parking areas. Now, I, I, don't, I think this is, and I haven't dove into it, this is just those side par parking areas where we are trying to keep approaches, driveways, your main driveway, our hard surface and not crushed limestone. Yeah, this wouldn't, this wouldn't involve uh like Mr. Cook said, the driveway <laughs> or, or your sidewalks. This is just for additional parking. And, uh, the, uh, and you know, if weeds goes up in it, they have to take care of it, they have to spray it. <coughs> spray it once a year with a really weed killer, that uh, a vegetation killer. And they used to have a vegetation killer that after three years of spraying it, there was nothing growing out, it didn't matter what you did. And you can't buy it anymore. It was so good they took it off the market. You know what I'm talking yep. about. <laughs> so, the only other thing that I see, and it's just this is from years ago, and this gets into that utility easement, is the reason the rear setback used to be 10 feet is it was always a 20 foot utility easement. 10 foot on one property, 10 foot on the other. So the goal was keep sheds, whatever it is, off that. Well, as you know, since 1950s when these places were put in, since then, chain link fences privacy fences, sheds, mm -hmm. everything else has been able to be built through all those years. So now the utility easement is no longer a 10 foot clear easement. It's, you know, I just watched a drill go through and he had to go, go under everything. They just can't get up. You know, they have to tear people's stuff down, which it's not good, but that's just where that number came from. Five side, 10 rear, 10 was always utility, utility easement. But now they have the underground diggers or whatever they call them that you know you don't have to you don't need to be have that 10 foot anymore i have a couple of questions do we need some action by virtue of uh, council on the pulling that uh, request back in regards to the uh, one foot parking violation since it went forward to two. That was a motion to draft, correct? No, yeah, okay. it was a motion to, uh, was it to draft? I, I, Either draft or have the law director yeah. bring something in. And, and it didn't get to the law director, so <clears throat> we probably should have a motion. Two. I'll make a motion to withdraw that uh, previous motion for the one foot between the bumpers. I have a motion going in a second by Mr. Shammy. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Shammy? Shammy? So we're, discussion? So we're not going to have the one foot? Right. That that will stay that in the stay. code. The one foot will stay. Yeah, right. that will stay. Yeah. Because it's not going to affect, it's only going to affect three or four people. I don't know how many, but we've only had that one complaint apparently so if we're going to do something do something that will help benefit the entire community not just one or two people or whatever it is okay that makes sense okay, okay. the only thing about that ordinance that is a determination factor of whether or not you write a ticket by the deputy that's writing that ticket 
it's no different than if you're going six miles over the speed limit, they're going to give you five. <coughs> it's up to that deputy whether he gives you a ticket based on that other one, one mile. Well, so yeah. if the deputy, I guess the word is, decides you should have a ticket, and most of the time when you're there talking to the gentleman that has done the infraction, if he comes out of the house all bent out of shape, then consequently he's going to get a ticket. Yeah. If he comes out of there and says, okay, I apologize, it was my fault, more than likely he won't get a ticket. The other factor of it is it's still in the Ohio Revised Code. The deputies could write that underneath the Ohio Revised Code and send the perpetrator to Springfield to court. So we technically are going to do an injustice to that guy. Anyhow, we're going to motion a second. Mrs. Byrne. Councilman Wright. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston. Yes. Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Motion to withdraw accepted 7-0. What I would like to do on these on this city coast that you brought up, Bill. I'd like to talk to the city manager and the law director, see whether or not any of these have to go before the planning board before they come to council. Uh, the city manager didn't believe they did, and he's checking on the grass. But I spoke with the uh, planning board president, and he said, and I ran this by him, he said he didn't believe any of them had to go before that. But the city manager is looking into it. I just haven't gotten back to him, or he hasn't gotten okay. back to me. Let's, can we table this until next meeting? Well, we can. Uh, I would like to continue talking or working with the manager on it and, and have something come forward, because he's going to do his due diligence. I, I asked him to do that, and uh, I told him that uh, I would bring this to council to see what council's feelings was on it, if they even wanted to do anything, you know, with this. <clears throat> and uh, he said that was a good idea, and then him and I got into another discussion about something else, which I'll, if I'm allowed, I'll bring it up after we put this one here to bed one way or the other. But it, it's up to council. I'm going to be looking at these codes, uh, and there, there's, from what the manager tells me, there's a lot of things that we can do to to help the citizens to make it a little easier on them. And that led us into another conversation. So I told him I would look into it. Go ahead, Mr. Bond. I'm I'm all for giving our citizens more freedom to exactly. do what they want to do. You know, just trust that they're gonna be responsible with that. So, I have no problem looking through. Go ahead, Ken. I agree, Bill. Um, uh. Yeah, it, I like your ideas. It's some that I had noticed, too. And I do think we need to look at things and make it as lenient as we can for the citizens without impeding on the neighbors, of course. Right. But yeah, I think he's got brought up some good things, and maybe even less on the side fence. Because like you said, a two-foot mower, you know, you really only need three. So I would like to, for him to continue working with the manager and trying to get our citizens a little relief from some of our things. So does council want a motion to to on the, just this stuff here to have the manager work with the law director on it and see what they come up with? That would be my suggestion uh, to have the city manager run this by the law director, and if it meets the criteria, I would have no problem with it. Um, so do we need a motion? I'll make the motion yeah, that, that the city manager and I continue working on this to get into the form of a ordinance to be brought at the next meeting. And it will also include the, the law director because he has to sign up on the form anyway. So if, if that's 
to leave, me, leave anything out. <laughs> yeah. And I can even put the code, the, the, it, it's 1460. Your first and second. Point four three. And oh, I hear a second. Uh, it's go ahead. Fourteen and sixty twenty six is the two, and sixteen or fourteen sixty forty four is the three code sections I was looking at. Do you want to keep that? Can I keep those? Yeah. Okay. Did you get what you need for the I want a copy of that, so probably just oh. gave it to me. I got a copy here. Yeah, I'm, go. I'm good. You know, I, I got I got it at my computer. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, is it good so call? I, I want, if you would, sir, give that to the city manager, because I told him I would have it here. I didn't know he wasn't going to be here, but I did email that to him. I think I might have changed one word on it. He may not have it, but just make sure he gets that, if you would. I have a motion and a second. Yep. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy. Yes. Pass the seven zero. And if I may, sir. Go uh, ahead. Thank you, Council. Uh, <clears throat> on on these uh, these we the manager and I was also talking about uh, you know like falling down gutters, chipping paint, stuff like that. I don't know what those codes are. I didn't get into those maintenance codes, but. We kind of kicked around an idea of of uh, having some money set aside into an account for the city to help people who can't afford to put their gutters back up or to get something painted and make it into a a. Uh, a interest-free loan and he's not here so I'm kind of going from memory I believe it was it was his idea because I'd have never thought of it uh, I asked him I says can we do that with taxpayer money I said I don't think we can do that he goes oh yeah we can so apparently he's already looked into it or thought about it or he knows another community someplace that's done it and and what it would be would entail the from our brief conversation about it it would be something along the i forget the letters he gave me a low to medium income people so it would kind of follow the power poverty guidelines but we can adjust those as a council either up or down and I told him, I said, you know, people that makes less than fifty thousand dollars probably don't have any money to put it, put get, hire somebody to put gutters up if they don't, especially elderly people that's on fixed income. And this would be a tax-free, a uh, interest-free loan to them. And then hopefully they would pay it back if they, at some point, had the funds to do that. If not, the city would forgive it. And, and I, I honestly, I couldn't believe that the manager was saying these things to me because I like to fill out my chair when he's having this conversation. So that's something else that, that I will talk to him and get more insight from him. But at the next meeting, I'll bring it up again and have him tell you all what I just said. And, and that's all I've got. Anybody got anything else? Second. Second, right? Good to call it. Councilman Wright? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Move to adjourn accepted 7 0. And with that, we are adjourned. <laughs>